Uh, thank you, Dr. Bansi and the team, Dr. Uh, Kerkun. It's a pleasure always to share your thoughts with the colleagues. So I have been provided a very interesting, rather I would say provocative topic, a CLT2 inhibitor, is it a new statin? So I will start just by asking this question that where is the data? We believe uh, in nothing except the science and the data. So let's look into the evidence of a CLT2 inhibitor, putting the data into the shoes of statin to understand whether a CLT2 inhibitor really looks like as in, you know, newer statin of 21st century. Now, let me recall that uh, a drug which has been approved uh, in 2012 by first in United States FDA uh, and uh, uh, by EMA in 2013, so nearly 10 years uh, now uh, the ZLT2 is there in the clinical space. A drug which has been approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So this drug was not supposed to actually, uh, you know, prevent heart disease or kidney disease. Uh, we don't expect that statin will, uh, you know, uh, cure diabetes or control diabetes, no question, whether statins are diabetogenic drug. So you don't expect even a CLT2 inhibitor to work as a statin. Interestingly, a drug which has been approved to treat type 2 diabetes and that was associated with weight loss and blood pressure reduction is, is now changing the entire landscape of treatment of diabetology, cardiology, and nephrology. So how come it has ha happened in past 100 years? Now, if you look into data, so far, we have got five cardiovascular outcome trials with a CLT2 inhibitor since in 2008, US FDA mandated that all new anti-diabetes drug, which has been given approval, has to undergo a safety cardiovascular outcome trial to suggest this drug doesn't do any harm to the heart. And the story started with Rosiglitazone fiasco. Now, what is interesting to note that in these five cardiovascular outcome trial, no need to read this busy slide. Recently, we summarized those data, busy slide. You all know the result. You have heard perhaps thousand times about Impareg outcome trial, declared TV, Canvas, etc., etc. The entire intention to show you in these five cardiovascular outcome trials with a five different a CLT2 inhibitor, starting from impagliflozin to canagliflozin to depagliflozin to artugliflozin. This is not available in India. It's approved in United States. And sotagliflozin. What was common in these trials, although they differ from, you know, to some extent in their primary objective, which was a composite of three-point mess, but there was one commonality in these five CB outcome trials. In all these five CB outcome trials, all five ZLT2 inhibitors done one job, that it prevents hospitalization due to heart failure. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, these are not a patients who had a history of heart failure. These are the patients of type 2 diabetes. They are, they could be a garden variety of diabetes. For example, if you see the declared TME out of 17,000 patients, 10,000 patients were a simple type 2 diabetic patients without any established cardiovascular disease. Therefore, this data suggests that a CLT2 inhibitor prevents hospitalization due to heart failure. You can see, and this, you know, prevention is not in a tune of 5 to 10%. These benefits are in the tune of 30 to 35%. Therefore, if you treat 100 patients of type 2 diabetes with a CLT2 inhibitor, you are likely to prevent heart failure hospitalization in the future in 35 out of the 100. This is not a joke. And therefore, the world's biggest organization sitting together, American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, Heart Failure Society of America, in their latest 2022 guideline, they give the class one grade A evidence to a CLT2 inhibitor to prevent heart failure hospitalization in patients with type 2 diabetes. What are the anti-diabetes drugs 
or what are the agents so far in the uh, pharmacology that has been given a approval of class 1 level of evidence A for a primary prevention? Now, if you compare a statin, the statin uh, is a drug which is recommended for secondary prevention as a class 1 grade A evidence. But when a statin doesn't have class 1A evidence to prevent heart disease, as you all know, statin is recommended for primary prevention in patients with type 2 diabetes, those who has got a high cardiovascular risk or those who are aged more than 40 years. But for a CLT2 inhibitor, this age is 18 years, regardless of whether you have got a high cardiovascular risk or not. If you have got a diabetes, it will prevent heart failure with a class 1A inhibitor. Number one. Now let's come to the second part of the story. So over the 10 years, what we learned that when we learned that this drug has a potential to prevent heart failure, people said, why don't you try this drug in a patient who had a history of heart failure or who has got a diagnosed heart failure? Well, let's do the trial. And to understand if the drug has a potential to prevent heart failure in a patient who do doesn't have heart failure, can we treat a patient with heart failure with a ZLT2 inhibitor? Ladies and gentlemen, we have got five heart failure dedicated trials with a ZLT2 inhibitor. As you all know, two in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, two trials in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, and one with either preserved or reduced. Here is the five dose heart failure trial. And you can see, if you see this line, these trials has been done who has a diagnosed heart failure. It can be reduced ejection fraction heart failure, those having a ejection fraction of less than 40%, or those having a ejection fraction of more than 40% known as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So you can see two trials, DEPA heart failure and impairer reduced in reduced ejection fraction and impairer preserved and deliver in patients with preserved ejection fraction. Another trial, fifth trial, which was done with sotagliflozin called Solovis. It was done in patients with both reduced and preserved ejection fraction. And what we learned, here is the result. If you look at the primary objective of these trials, in all these four, and if you include Deliver now as well, because Deliver was presented less than one week back, as you all know in European Society of Cardiology, very recently, if you combine all the five trials put together, one consistent data. A ZLT2 has never lose any match till date. In these five dedicated outcome trials, the composite of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization, which was the primary objective of the study, was highly statistically significant. And that too in the tune of 20 to 25 percent. Means if, if you have got a patient with diagnosed heart failure, regardless of ejection fraction, this drug is going to, uh, you know, treat your patients with heart failure. No wonder AHA, ACC, HFSA guideline put them a step that yes, gentlemen, you are a class one level of evidence A for the treatment of patients with heart failure, regardless of diabetes. Remember, this drug was meant to treat diabetes and now recommended to treat heart failure even in a patient who do not have diabetes. What a story which has come up in last 10 years. Now, statin, if you take a corollary to statin, they also have got a class 1A evidence in patients with heart disease, but they don't have the class 1A evidence to treat heart failure. That's the beauty and the difference between a ZLT2 and a statin. Now, this is important. Now, if you look back to patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, this is one area in the field of cardiology which has not been met for past 100 years. There was no drug tried in the past that was useful in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Even ERNI was tried, uh, you know, in the, in the recent Paragon heart failure trial. And although there was numerical reduction, you can see there are five trials done with either ERNI or spironolactone, and these are three trials with RAS blocker. You can see it will be certain and can be certain and ACE inhibitor, perindoprim. 
all these trials shown some numerical benefit but if you go right inside it wasn't a statistically significant so basically all these five trials done in patients with preserved rejection fraction was a neutral on the other hand or contrarily if you see only two trials done so far with sclt2 in patients with preserved rejection fraction imperial preserved and recently as i said week back delivered in both the trial you can see it met their primary objective with a highly statistically p value significance ranging from 18 to 21% this suggests that now we have got a tool for the first time that can take care of patients with preserved ejection fraction not again these are regardless of type 2 diabetes so these benefits has been seen in a patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction not necessarily that patient needs to have a diabetes so now you have got a clt2 that works in patients with reduced ejection fraction that works in patients with preserved ejection fraction regardless of type 2 diabetes now if you see the guideline the guideline given them level of evidence which is 2a cl class 2a level of evidence p now if you see this aha guideline this given this price was given prior to the delivered trial this data is given on the basis of only imperial preserved data now if i believe if the delivered data is would be now added into 2023 guideline then i am sure this 2a will be elevated after adding this is how the rule goes if the two randomized control trial shown a positive outcome on the primary composite endpoint ideally this should get a class 1 level of evidence a and i'm sure in the next guideline this will be elevated for the clt2 in preserved ejection fraction similar like a reduced ejection fraction now let's shift gear from cardiology to nephrology we have got three kidney outcome trials in past 10 years and what is again surprising to believe that a clt2 never bore you it always always comes with a flying color now this is the two trial which was done earlier and now we are waiting for the impa kidney outcome trial impa kidney is going to be presented at american society of nephrology in november 2022 so two months from now and we all know that even impa kidney outcome trial was a stop like against and depa ckd because of excess benefit in the clt2 arm so i do believe that the data of impa kidney would be pretty similar or in similar line with what we saw with the credence and depa ckd so in summary in all these three kidney outcome trial the clt2 inhibitor met their primary objective and it reduced you know progression of chronic kidney disease in patients with ckd regardless of type 2 diabetes in credence it was uh, all patients with diabetic chronic kidney disease but in depa ckd and in the impa renal or impa kidney outcome trial these are the patients with ckd with or without diabetic ckd and as you all know the depa already has got a approval to be used to prevent progression of chronic kidney disease regardless of type 2 diabetes so therefore in all the three renal outcome trial the clt2 came with a flying colors no wonder if you see the kdgo 2020 draft which is yet not a guideline this will be soon published as a guideline now the, they have recommended that if you have got a patients with type 2 diabetes with a chronic kidney disease do use a clt2 inhibitor if the egfr is more than 20 and this is a mandatory recommendation and perhaps it would be a crime that if you have got a patients with ckd and patient is not receiving a clt2 inhibitor to prevent the progression of chronic kidney disease and to prevent the future cardiovascular event in a patients with ckd so adgo guideline and remember even uh, the the ada esd guideline in the month of may 2022 changed their dynamic algorithm and suggested remember it was earlier 30 the egfr cut off for the clt2 was 30 but it has been brought down to 20 now similar like kdgo guideline and they recommend 
that if you have got a patient with CKD and type 2 diabetes, and if the patient has got EGFR of more than 20, on, you must use a CLT2 inhibitor. Now, uh, one point, even if the EGFR falls below 20, don't uh, stop a CLT2 inhibitor unless patient is going for a dialysis or going for a kidney replacement therapy like renal transplantation. Finally, the last part of the story, that the CLT2, beyond all these trials, they went into acute field. They tried to do, uh, you know, uh, to see the result of a CLT2 in patients with acute heart failure admitted in an ICCU. Now, the, the concept behind this comes from this three trial. Let's go back to the DEPA heart failure, impairer reduced and the impairer preserved trial. What is interesting to note, ladies and gentlemen, that in all these trials, the benefit had started as early as 12 to 18 days. And, you know, as you can see, my lines, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. People thought that why don't you try a CLT2 in a patient with acute heart failure? And people did the trial. Look here. These are the trials which is being done in patients with acute heart failure. And this includes decompensated as well as compensated heart failure. Now you can see on your left hand side, there are four trials with a CLT2 inhibitor that has been either undergoing and already underwent in patients with acute heart failure. You can see the three green mark three trial already has been conducted and the result is already out in patients with acute heart failure. The only one trial is we are waiting for the dictate heart failure trial is right now undergoing with dapagliflozin in acute decompensated heart failure. But we do have data from the other three trials in patients with acute heart failure. And here is the result. You can see here in these three acute heart failure trials, the ZLT2 was started in the first 24 hour of admission in the ICCU setup. And on your right hand side, here is the result. In all the three acute heart failure trials, the ZLT2 didn't show any heart. There was, if at all anything, this own benefit. And you can see, as you all know, in soloist heart failure trial, it was the primary outcome of CB death heart failure was met. In the impulse trial, although it didn't achieve a statistical significance, but the recurrence of heart failure hospitalization did reduce with impact leaflogen. And same data came with impa response. And when people maternalize these data, you can see here the benefit even was seen in patients with acute heart failure. Ladies and gentlemen, we expect uh, side effects of SGLT2 in a setting of acute, uh, you know, decompensated setup. Now you would be amazed to see that even SGLT2 didn't do any harm when it comes to hypotension, acute kidney injury, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can see there was no signals of any harm even in a setup of acute heart failure when SGLT2 was used within 24 hours of hospitalization due to acute heart failure. Therefore, if you see the entire totality of evidence with a CLT2 inhibitor in patients with type 2 diabetes, and if you go over the time, whether you have got a patient with normal ventricular function, as in these trials, or patient has got advanced heart failure, like in acute heart failure, impulse, impa response, you see the benefit. And what is interesting to note that these benefits are higher in those who are more sick. Look here in the acute soloist heart failure trial, the benefit, look at the NNT. The NNT is 10. Where is the data with the static uh, with the NNT of 10? So what is interesting to know that the more sicker your patient is, the larger the benefit you are going to extract with your ZLT2 inhibitor. And these are absolute benefit. Look at the number needed to treat to prevent the primary outcome. It's amazing with a CLT2 inhibitor. Finally, before I finish my presentation, these are two recent studies which I would like to show you. And this is a first evidence which has been done with a CLT2 in a patients with acute MI. CLT2 was never tried in past in patients with acute myocardial infarction. You can see two trials, in-body trial in your left-hand side and E trial on your right-hand side. These are the patients with acute myocardial infarction with, with or without type 2 diabetes. Whereas ZLT2 was started 
you know, in your right hand side is the IMI trial, whereas 72 was started within 72 hours of undergoing a angioplasty. And here is the result uh, with a ZLT2 inhibitor. Surprising to see that a ZLT2 shown improvement in their primary outcome. They reduced anti pro BNP, they improved all secondary outcome in patients with acute MI. So, this is a first evidence for a ZLT2 in a patient having a large acute myocardial infarction, undergone a primary angioplasty, and were given a ZLT2, yet a ZLT2 shown benefit compared to placebo. Look at the result NT pro BNP, highly statistically significant. Look at the LVEF in patients with acute MI. Ladies and gentlemen, so this is the data in entirety till today. We published uh, a week back. If you look at the SGLT2 inhibitor, what else you want? The drug was meant for to treat diabetes. We won in CKD. We won in reduced ejection fraction. We won in preserved ejection fraction. We won in a stable acute HF. We almost won in acute heart failure. And uh, all the trials are going on. This post-MI, I have shown you two data. To finish my presentation, is it a new study? I didn't say anything. Let's see who said. Godfather of cardiology, Professor Eugene Brownwald, he wrote editorial. He said the CLT2 inhibitor looks to be the starting of 21st century. Now, if you ask me, my statement would be even provocative. Now, if I ask this question, does a statin work in patients with CKD? The answer is no. Does a statin work in a patients with heart failure? The answer is no. If that is the situation, then I do believe that this is a high time that a CLT2 inhibitor deserves to take first the treatment of type 2 diabetes. The metformin is whether given as a first line or not, it doesn't matter to me. Every diabetic patient, if a CLT2 is not contraindicated, must receive a CLT2 inhibitor. When it comes to comparing a statin, it is as good as a statin but it is better than a statin in patients with heart failure and CKD where the CLT2 sounds quite superior with produced so far. Thank you very much for your patience.